After Intrepid gave us a magnificent freehold presentation, in my opinion, this past week, there's been a lot of talk around this system and if it's a bad idea for Intrepid to restrict the high-end processing profession behind a freehold system that a very low percentage of people can actually obtain. Some people are concerned about guilds owning the freehold market, while others just concerned they won't have the time to have their fair chance at getting a freehold from the other player because they are more casual. In both versions, it then ends up having a high amount of people locked out of the processing profession because you can't master that profession without a freehold. Freeholds work like this. First, you complete a quest that gives you the ability to bid on freehold permits at a node. Obviously, the higher bidder gets the permit. Players can then use their newly won permits to lay down claim to any parcel within the node's region. And once they have their land, begin building up their freehold on that plot. Steven stated in Discord that freeholds will be in the low thousands when it comes to availability, where server caps will be at 15,000 players at launch and 8 to 10,000 active at one time. So roughly 8% of players would have access to to a freehold if there are 2,000 available, which is a bit restricting, and that's where the big concern comes in, because only 8% of players will now have direct access to high-end processing within the world of Vera. But is every player gonna be a processor? You can only go out there and master one profession in the artisan system, and you're either a gatherer, a processor, or a crafter, and the majority of professions are going to be built off the backs of gatherers for a long time. For processors to get those high-end materials, they're going to need to get it from the gatherers, but for the crafters to get the high-end refined goods that they need, they will need to come from the processors, which honestly, this could probably put more of a strain on the crafting profession than it does the processing profession. There are three other ways to get your hands on a freehold besides the bidding, at least in a way where you can utilize the processing stations. The first would be to join a family of someone who has one. Steven stated that players could technically rent out family slots to other players whom would have access to your freehold, but there will be cooldowns on this in place and the family system is reserved to about eight players, which is all probably subject to testing and the family system gives you other perks as well, such as family summons, family names, and things like that. Then there is the option to buy freeholds from other players. Ashes of Creation will have a real estate component to it, not just with freeholds, but with all types of houses that players will have the opportunity to spend some gold to gain access to, probably at a higher cost than you would initially if you just grabbed the house when it was available, but keep in mind, freeholds are also temporary, which could increase or decrease the price depending on if there's a guild war brewing and a siege being inevitable, which brings me to my third option of obtaining one. And this would be to wait it out for a siege, because as nodes are destroyed, so are freeholds, and this opens up the opportunity to start the process over and once again have an opportunity for players to build on new plots. But this goes into the whole, well, guilds can control the market and pool their money to help restrict freeholds to only their guildmates, which is in fact not not wrong. This sort of thing happens in any MMORPG and it can be extremely frustrating to players, which is why you should be seeking out a guild yourself to get that same assistance. And while those big name servers may be very guild heavy, the way Ashes is designed, it'll be pretty hard for one guild to control a server like this. You'll need more than one guild to siege a node, there is no fast travel, and guilds tend to stick to the same areas and probably will more so in Ashes so they are ready to go when needed. So while they might dominate that one area for a while, there could be potential parts of the map that are less populated with guilds that still have the opportunity for freeholds to be unlocked. There's also the option of joining a server where there isn't a big guild or a streamer, although that is hard for some of the more casual followers to keep track of. But this brings me to my next point that Ashes of Creation is not a game that is built for a casual player. Yes, you can still play it as a casual, but there are many systems in here that are going to be very time consuming and require big cooperation among other players. And if you're looking for an MMO, as a solo player to just jump into for a couple hours a day and feel like you've accomplished something, well, this probably is not the game for you. Freeholds are a system that I see playing a big part in driving Ashes of Creation toward Intrepid's vision, and this happens in a couple of ways. First, currently the way they're designed, it strengthens the economy, because those processed goods are going to cost money and they're going to need to be moved around the server via caravans or mules to spread them out where there is a limited supply of them, which will help the caravan-type systems continue to be used 
utilized throughout the game. Second, it puts an emphasis on that solo aspect and guild cooperation of the game that Intrepid is trying to bring back to MMOs. Ashes of Creation is meant to be a game that is built around social interaction. The game wants you to interact with other players and wants you to utilize your guilds or your friends to help you out to get what you need and this is going to be a huge part of the game. As I said, if you're going into this game solo and not planning on joining a guild, you are probably going to struggle. But with the cons, this is in a way isolating part of the player base by putting restrictions on processing. And like I said earlier, unless there is some part of the crafting that we don't know about yet, it is going to put a very large strain on high-end crafting as well as processing at the beginning of the game's life and until enough time has passed that players have gone the server's economy into a good spot. The economy is fully player run and you're going to start with absolutely nothing in circulation to slowly building it up with the systems as the nodes develop and the players move around and all of that, which will be time consuming to the player and you're probably not going to see a lot of high-end crafting or processing materials on the server for the first month. But what you will see is you will see gatherers owning the market for quite some time until things start to catch up, and eventually it will trickle into the processors buying the high-end goods and slowly feeding into the high-end crafters. Here's the big thing though, Ashes of Creation has not even hit its Alpha 2 testing stage yet. All of these systems will continue to be tweaked through the testing with player feedback as Intrepid has always done. So if Intrepid finds this system is not working in testing, then they will react to it. It may drag out the alpha testing longer than we want, but they have always been the developers that listen to players and react, and that isn't going to change, and there is no sense in getting mad at a game or a system that could change a hundred times between now and launch. So utilize the forums and make sure you give your proper feedback to Intrepid so they can continue to iterate on their processes and shape a great MMO. Also, if you've made it this far into the video, click that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up to help out the channel, and let me know in the comments your thoughts on high-end processing being locked behind a freehold. Otherwise, if you're new to Ashes and if you have to create an account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can jump in on the forums, buy some cosmetics, or just hang out until you can finally step foot into the world of Vera. Otherwise, be sure to stay tuned for a lot more to come.